Welcome to our deep dive today. Um, we're going to be exploring a report called Meta Trends and Moonshots for 2022 to 2032. And uh, it really sketches out some pretty fascinating potential advancements on the horizon. Yeah. I mean, what's got me particularly interested is how interconnected all these trends are. It's almost like pieces of a giant puzzle. Yeah forming a picture of the future. It's true. It's like each technology is a catalyst for another one. Right. And it creates this ripple effect yeah. of innovation. And if you look at the bigger picture, it's pretty clear that AI is the driving force behind a lot of what we'll be talking about today. It really does feel like we're at this inflection point with AI. I mean, the report even suggests things like kids' toys recognizing their faces, appliances yeah. anticipating our needs. I mean, it's like mm. it's like living in a world we used to only see in sci-fi movies, you know? Yeah. And a lot of that comes down to just the the decreasing cost of AI chips, right? Mm -hmm. Combine that with the expansion of 5G networks and cloud computing, those factors together are creating an environment where AI can really flourish. Mm. It's pretty amazing. It is pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. And then you have like experts like Ray Kurzweil predicting that AI could reach human-level intelligence by 2029. Right. Others, like Elon Musk, even say it could happen sooner, like by 2025. Right. It's a, it's a hotly debated topic. Yeah. And Honestly, no one knows for sure what the timeline looks like. Yeah. But I think um, instead of like picturing this robot takeover like in the movies. Right. It's more helpful to think of AI as a tool. Right. OK. This report uses the term AI as a service or AI. AS. Yeah. So think of it as augmenting our capabilities. OK. Rather than replacing us entirely. So instead of worrying about robots stealing our jobs, we should be thinking about how we can work alongside them. Exactly. Imagine like doctors being considered negligent if they didn't consult AI for a diagnosis. Wow. Or architects using AI to design buildings that are you know, safer and more energy efficient. Okay. It's about harnessing the power of AI to enhance our own abilities. That makes a lot more sense than like the whole Terminator scenario. So if AI is becoming more like a tool that we can all use, does that mean it will be accessible to everyone? That's the goal. And we're already seeing signs of that democratization. Right. Tools like GPT-3 for writing and Delhi 2 for creating images, they're becoming more widely available. It's not just tech giants who have access anymore. Mm, that's really interesting. Imagine a world where anyone, regardless of their technical skills, could utilize AI to enhance their work or even pursue creative passions they never thought possible. Absolutely. And it goes beyond individual tools. This report even talks about the emergence of a Jarvis-like software shell. You mean like a personal AI assistant that helps you manage your entire life? Yeah, basically. That does sound pretty amazing. I could definitely use an extra hand, or should I say an extra algorithm, yeah. to keep everything organized. Think about how services like Alexa or Siri are already integrated into our lives. Now imagine those assistants becoming infinitely more personalized and capable as AI continues to advance. It might sound far-fetched now, but it's not outside the realm of possibility in the next decade. Okay. So we've got super intelligent AI becoming more accessible, potentially revolutionizing everything from healthcare to architecture. What other technological leaps are on the horizon? Well, remember that idea of a future straight out of a sci-fi film. Let's talk about robots. Okay. And I'm not talking about your average Roomba vacuuming the carpet. Oh, we're going full on humanoid robots now, like Data from Star Trek or C-3PO from Star Wars. Not quite that advanced yet, Okay. but we're getting closer. This section focuses on the rise of humanoid robots, specifically those designed to integrate into our daily lives within this decade. I remember all the buzz about Tesla's Optimus robot. Is that the kind of thing we're talking about? Exactly. Elon Musk has been pretty vocal about his vision for Optimus, claiming it could revolutionize the labor market by taking on jobs humans don't want to do. That brings up a lot of questions about the future of work and what it means for society if robots start taking over those jobs. Absolutely. But it's not just about robots replacing human workers entirely. This report also delves into the concept of remotely controlled humanoid avatars, which is a whole other level of mind-blowing. So I could be sitting here sipping my coffee while simultaneously controlling a robot on the other side of the world. That sounds like something straight out of a video game. It does, doesn't it? But the implications are huge. Imagine addressing labor shortages in certain industries or performing dangerous tasks remotely without putting humans at risk. It's wild to think about how these advancements could reshape our world. Speaking of reshaping, this report also dives into the future of transportation. And I have to admit, this is the part I'm most excited about. 
Yeah, who doesn't love a little futuristic transportation talk? Right. And this report does not disappoint. It goes beyond just electric cars, delving into the rise of self-driving vehicles and even flying cars. Mm, okay, let's start with the self-driving cars because those are already starting to appear on our roads. Are we really headed towards a future where we can just sit back and relax while our cars do all the work? It's looking more and more likely. Companies like Tesla, Waymo, and Cruise are making significant progress in autonomous driving technology. Yeah. And as this technology matures, we can expect to see a shift towards car-as-a-service models, making transportation significantly cheaper and more accessible. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you don't have to drive, the car becomes more of a utility than a possession. You just summon it when you need it, and it takes you where you want to go. Exactly. Imagine a world where kids grow up never needing to learn how to drive. Wow. Parking garages become obsolete. Traffic jams are a distant memory. It sounds almost utopian, but I can also see how it would completely transform the way our cities are designed. Right. And speaking of transforming cities, let's talk about flying cars. Is that really something we could see in our lifetime? This report seems to think so. It highlights electric vertical takeoff in landing aircraft, or EV tiles, as a game changer in urban mobility. These vehicles combine the convenience of helicopters with the environmental benefits of electric power. So instead of being stuck in traffic, we'll all be zipping around in our personal flying machines. It does sound appealing, I have to admit. It's certainly a possibility, especially in densely populated urban environments. Imagine being able to bypass congested roadways and arrive at your destination in a fraction of the time. It would certainly make those Monday morning commutes a lot more bearable. But it also makes you wonder about the logistics of it all. How do you manage air traffic control with thousands of these things flying around? What about noise pollution yeah. and safety? Those are all valid concerns, and the report acknowledges that there are still hurdles to overcome. But it also emphasizes the rapid pace of innovation in this field. Companies and regulators are working together to address these challenges and establish clear guidelines for the safe integration of EV tails into our airspace. It's fascinating to think about the ripple effects these transportation advancements could have on everything from urban planning to our daily commutes. But this report doesn't just focus on the big ticket items like AI and robots. It also delves into what it calls the instant economy. What exactly does that entail? This is where things get really interesting. The instant economy is all about shrinking the gap between desire and fulfillment, driven by on-demand delivery and production. Imagine a world where you can order a custom-designed product and have it 3D printed and delivered to your doorstep within hours. So instead of waiting days or even weeks for a package to arrive, we're talking about near instantaneous gratification. It's like having a Star Trek replicator in your living room. It's not quite that advanced yet, but we're getting closer. The convergence of technologies like drones, autonomous vehicles, localized manufacturing, and sophisticated logistics networks is making this on-demand future a real possibility. It's amazing to think about how these advancements could revolutionize everything, from retail to healthcare to our daily lives. But with all this talk about speed and efficiency, it makes you wonder about the human cost. Will we all become so reliant on instant gratification that we lose the ability to be patient or appreciate the value of waiting for something we truly desire? It's a valid concern. As with any technological advancement, there's always the potential for unintended consequences. But it's also important to remember that technology is a tool, and it's up to us to use it wisely and responsibly. The report doesn't shy away from these ethical considerations, and it emphasizes the importance of finding a balance between progress and well-being. That's a good point. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of these advancements, but we have to remember that technology should enhance our lives, not dictate them. And speaking of technology shaping our world, the next section delves into a topic that's been generating a lot of buzz lately. The hyper-connected world of 5G, ubiquitous sensors, and the trillion sensor economy. It feels like we're on the verge of a world where everything is connected and constantly collecting data. We're already seeing this trend unfold, and this report suggests it's only going to accelerate in the coming years. With the rollout of 5G networks, the launch of massive satellite constellations like Starlink, and the proliferation of low-cost sensors, we're entering an era of unprecedented connectivity and data collection. It's both exciting and a little unnerving at the same time. On the one hand, think of the possibilities. We could have smarter cities that optimize traffic flow and energy consumption, personalized medicine tailored to our individual genetic makeup, and a deeper understanding of our planet and the environment. 
But on the other hand, it's hard not to think about the potential for privacy violations, data breaches, and even the rise of surveillance states. You're right. It's a double-edged sword. And this report doesn't sugarcoat the potential downsides. It stresses the importance of establishing robust ethical frameworks, be it privacy regulations, and cybersecurity measures to mitigate the risks associated with this level of interconnectedness. It also highlights the need for greater transparency and accountability from governments and corporations when it comes to data collection and use. It sounds like we're entering uncharted territory, and it's up to us to navigate these challenges responsibly. But before we delve too deeply into the ethical implications, let's shift gears and explore another aspect of this hyperconnected future, the rise of Web3 and the metaverse. These terms have become ubiquitous lately, but I have to admit, I'm still trying to wrap my head around what they actually mean. It's understandable. There's a lot of hype and speculation surrounding Web3 and the metaverse, but at their core, they represent a fundamental shift in how we interact with the internet and with each other online. Web3 is often described as the internet of value built on blockchain technology, where users have greater control over their data and digital assets. The metaverse, on the other hand, is more about creating immersive, interactive digital environments where we can work, play, socialize, and even conduct business. So are we talking about a future where we're spending more and more of our lives in virtual worlds, interacting with avatars instead of real people? It all sounds a bit like Ready Player One to me. It's certainly a possibility, and the report explores the potential social and psychological implications of such a shift. But it also highlights the potential benefits such as creating new opportunities for remote collaboration, breaking down geographical barriers, and providing novel forms of entertainment and education. It's fascinating to think about how these technologies could reshape our world, both online and offline. But with all this focus on the future, let's not forget about the present, especially when it comes to one of the most critical aspects of our lives, healthcare. This report suggests we're on the cusp of a healthcare revolution, driven by breakthroughs in fields like AI, biotechnology, and nanotechnology. It's a lot to unpack, but I'm curious to hear your insights on where this is all headed. Well, this report dives into some truly fascinating possibilities. We're talking about extending lifespans, shifting toward preventative care, and potentially curing diseases that were once considered incurable. A big part of this is the rise of gene editing technologies, particularly CRISPR. CRISPR has been in the news a lot, but I'll admit the science behind it still feels a bit like science fiction to me. Could you break it down for me? CRISPR has been in the news a lot, but I'll admit the science behind it still feels a bit like science fiction to me. Could you break it down for me? Imagine having the ability to like precisely target and modify specific genes within our DNA. Oh, okay. That's essentially what CRISPR allows us to do. It's like having a microscopic pair of scissors that can cut and paste genetic code, potentially correcting genetic defects that lead to various diseases. So instead of treating the symptoms of a disease, we could potentially eliminate the root cause at a genetic level. That's the ultimate goal. CRISPR has shown incredible promise in treating a range of diseases, from cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia to certain types of cancer. And it goes beyond just treating existing conditions. Some researchers believe CRISPR could play a role in preventative medicine, potentially correcting genetic predispositions for diseases before they even manifest. It's mind-boggling to think about the potential. Are we talking about adding years, maybe even decades, to our lifespans? It's not outside the realm of possibility. This report highlights numerous biotech companies developing revolutionary treatments with the potential to significantly extend our health span, the number of years we live relatively healthy, active lives. It makes you wonder if, in the future, we'll view aging itself as a disease, something to be treated rather than simply accepted. It's a fascinating philosophical shift, and one that's gaining traction within the scientific community. If we can target the underlying processes of aging at a cellular level, it's conceivable that we can slow down or even reverse some of the negative effects of aging. It sounds like we're on the verge of a paradigm shift in how we approach healthcare, from treating diseases to extending health span and potentially even manipulating the aging process itself. But with all these advancements, how do we ensure these technologies are accessible and affordable for everyone? That's the million dollar question, and one that policymakers and healthcare providers will grapple with in the coming years. But this report does offer some hopeful signs. For one, many of these advancements, especially in the field of AI and personalized medicine, have the potential to make healthcare more efficient and cost-effective in the long run. So instead of relying on expensive treatments and lengthy hospital stays, 
We could have AI algorithms monitoring our health in real time, alerting us to potential problems before they become serious. Exactly. It's about shifting from a reactive healthcare system to a more proactive preventative model. Imagine wearing a device that constantly analyzes your vital signs, detects early signs of disease, and even provides personalized recommendations for diet and exercise based on your unique genetic makeup. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it also brings up concerns about data privacy and who has access to all this personal information. You're right to raise those concerns. It's crucial to have robust data privacy regulations and ethical frameworks in place to ensure these advancements benefit humanity as a whole, not just a select few. It's a lot to consider, but I think it's important to approach these advancements with both a sense of optimism and cautious awareness. Optimism because the potential benefits, especially in healthcare, are truly transformative, but also awareness of the potential pitfalls and the need to navigate these uncharted waters responsibly. I completely agree. It's a balancing act, but ultimately, it's up to us to decide how we want to integrate these technologies into our lives and shape the future of healthcare. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the rise of AI and robots to the potential for a future shaped by gene editing, personalized medicine, and even flying cars. And we've only scratched the surface of the insights presented in this Metatrends and Moonshots report. If you're interested in learning more about the trends shaping our future, I encourage you to dive into this report and draw your own conclusions. One thing is for sure, the next decade promises to be anything but boring.